So how do you make a brain? What you need is a bunch of volunteers and a brain in a bag. So what do you have in the bag? You basically just need Blue, Blue Peter technology. So what's in the bag? It's just rope and tubes. So what do we do? We take the rope and wire the people together, the volunteers together as neurons. So you get to hold that, you're a neuron. You get to hold the knot, you hold one end and you hold the other end. And what we've created here is a neuron. If you look what she's like, you've got two lines coming in and one line going out. So she's a very simple neuron and each of them are acting like neurons. Let's build some more. So if you hold that there and then you hold the end and you hold that end. So what we've created now is something that looks like a set of neurons wired together, but it's not doing anything. So what's the first thing we need to make it work and actually start to do anything? We need something to act as the chemical messengers to send messages from one neuron to another. So that's what the tubes are for. So you get a tube, so feed it onto the end of the rope. You get a tube, feed it onto the end of the rope. You get a tube, feed it onto the end. And you get a tube, feed it onto the end. So each of those can send signals onto the other neurons. And now you also get a tube. So for you to get that, I need to thread it on from here. That goes to you. And we need one on this side that goes to you. Now, if you think of each of these people as being a neuron, they can send signals to each other. So if you want to send a signal to him, you can just fire the tube down the rope and it goes there, okay? And it can be reset and send it back. So you can do that more easily actually by just lifting the rope. Okay, so you can send signals from one neuron to the next. So everybody have a go at doing that. Just make sure you can do that. Everybody send, send your tube, your signal to the person. So what we've got now is a brain that's doing something. It's just not being very intelligent. It's not doing anything particularly useful. It's just acting randomly. Okay, so stop, send all the tubes back to where they came from. So how do we make a brain? We've built a brain, we've got a physical brain, it's got a way of sending signals between neurons. What we need now is a way of controlling it. It needs a program. Each of the neurons need their instructions. So we give each neuron a separate instruction and different neurons are going to act in different ways. So the four people around the outside are going to be the sensors of a brain. If a brain is going to work, it's got to be able to sense the world. So you four are all eye neurons. You sense the world. And you each get a different instruction with a different threshold. So the first one is an eye neuron. You have a rule that says fire on a red card in position one. You have a similar rule. Your rule is fire on a red card in position two. Again, similar, you fire on a black card in position one. And I will tell you what we mean by position one and position two in a moment. And your rule says you fire on a black card in position two. So does everybody know what their rule is? You may want to now put your cards down on the floor where, they can, where you can see them so that you've got your hands free. So those are the sensors of the brain. We've then got two neurons that are deep inside the brain. They can't sense the world. All they can do is react to the signals that come to them. They're called interneurons. So you're deep inside the brain. You can't sense the world out. All you can do is react to the signals that come into you. And you have a threshold of two. So that what that does that mean? It means if you get two pulses coming in, then and only then do you fire your tube coming out. So when two pulses come to you, you can send a tube out. Yeah. So We've got another interneuron. You have basically the same rule. Two, two pulses come into you. You can send your pulse out, but nothing else. Otherwise, you do nothing else. OK, so if you two know what you're doing, you can put the instructions down. Those are the programs that you're following. So finally, we need what's perhaps the most important 
thing, what I will call the snap neuron for now. So this is what you're doing. So you're the snap neuron. For a brain to have any use in the world, it's got to have some way of manipulating the world, of interacting with the world. So you're essentially it. The brain kind of is connected ultimately to the muscles in your in the mouth and you basically get to shout. So when you fire, you don't send signals anywhere, you control the muscles in the mouth of my brain and you shout snap as loud as you can. Okay, so your threshold is one pulse. So all you need is one pulse coming in, you fire, and what does it mean for you to fire? It means you shout snap. Okay, so if you'd like to put your instructions down and we'll see if this whole thing works. The eye neurons, your goals talked about position one and position two. What do I mean by position one and position two, the positions on this card? This is position one, this is position two, and I'm going to turn cards over and put them in those positions, and you then react or don't react according to your rule. So does everybody know what they're doing? Yes. What have we done? We've built a brain that can play snap, hopefully. What should happen is it can play red black snap. So if there are two reds, then it should shout snap. If there are two blacks, it should shout snap. But if there's a red and a black, then it should stay silent. So essentially it will just play snap. Okay, so let's go. I'll turn the cards over. Only the eyes are reacting to the cards. Everybody else just follows their rule reacting to the signals that come to them. So let me turn a card. The first card is a black in position one, and that should lead to something happening. And it does. We then turn the next card. We've got a black in position two. Snap! And it worked. Two blacks and we had a snap. So let's try the next one. What your brain does at this point is all the signals go back, the chemicals go back to where they came from. So you refresh and you're starting again. So we've got two more colours. We've got a red in position one. We've got a red in position two. Snap! And it works. Two reds and it shouts a snap. Of course, what I could have just created is a brain that does nothing that but shout snap whatever happens. So we ought to keep going and keep testing it to, to make sure it doesn't just always shout snap. So this time I've got a red in position one. I've got a black in position two. And it stays silent, which is right. So let's just keep going. So reset again. So this time, We've got a black in position one and a red in position two. And it stays silent. Of course, it may just have broken. So maybe we'd better just keep going one more time just to be sure. So we've got a black in position one. We've got a black in position two. Snap! And it shouts snap. One last time, we've got a red in position one, we've got a red in position two, snap. and it shouts snap. So we've built a brain that can play snap out of artificial neurons. And of course, here we've only got seven neurons, all it can do is a very sort of simple thing, but essentially what's going on there is exactly what's going on in your head when you play snap. So your eyes pick up signals, they fire neurons that cause other neurons to fire, that cause neurons to fire that make your mouth work and your mouth shouts snap. And you can subconsciously do that faster than probably you're actually consciously thinking. So we, we've only got seven neurons here, so it doesn't do an awful lot because it can just play red, black, snap. But if we had more neurons, we could probably create something that would play full snap. We could even put, create two brains and play them against one another to see which was the fastest and you know, which would actually win. You've got billions of neurons in your head, that's why you can do as much as you can. 
And so what this shows is a little experiment that you can create a, a computational model of the way we think your neurons work and when we put neurons together that work in that way we end up some, some, with something that works pretty much like our own brains work.